I've had some people ask me about the general process I follow to turn a concept drawing into a final render. So for this video, I dug out one of my old sketches and fired up Blender. I used a pretty accurate perspective in the original drawn, so I figured I may as well just match the composition exactly for the final render. I didn't have to do this, I could have placed the camera anywhere in the scene and just modelled it using the sketch as a reference, but I thought it would be more interesting if I had an exact recreation from the same angle. So I went around and just blocked out all the basic shapes and to be honest I was pretty surprised how accurate the original perspective of the drone was. Everything lined up pretty well. And to create the floor I used the same method a lot of you guys will have seen me use before. I just added a few cuts and aligned them to where the floorboard gaps are. I beveled the cuts a little bit to add some thickness and then just extruded down slightly. You get a really nice looking floor this way. It doesn't take a lot of work and you don't have to add tons of geometry like you do if you use a displacement modifier. I've created a few different bedroom scenes like this in the past so I knew I'd probably be able to reuse some of my old assets. I tried to model all of the assets that are in my scenes. I don't really download anything off the internet but I don't have any problem with reusing old work. There's no reason to keep remaking the same cup over and over again. So from this old render, I took like the clock, the cup, the PC, and I think a few other things. The computer itself was actually incredibly simple. It isn't the focal point. There's no need to add loads of detail. I actually decided to create this basically Ian Hubert style. I got a few images of like motherboards and things off the internet. I added some cuts to the images, extruded out the shapes of the key details, and it looks fine. Yeah, it doesn't look great, and yeah, you get a little bit of texture stretching in certain places, but that ain't going to be noticeable in the final, so who cares? You can see in the original concept that the desktop background some kind of like epic landscape artwork. I had 30 minutes to kill, so I decided to create the artwork for myself in Photoshop. This ain't a painting tutorial so I'll keep this part as brief as I can. But I do recommend you try your hand at some digital painting yourself. I use it quite a lot just to do textures and things like that in Photoshop. I personally haven't painted a landscape for a few years now, so I was rusty as hell. But it's only a small part of the final render, so I wasn't worried if it didn't look good. I just blocked out the basic shapes in black and white. It's really hard to mess up a painting of mountains. I mean... If it kind of looks like rocks and it's pointy at the top, it's probably going to look like a mountain. You can't really go wrong there. Once the basic shapes were in place, I just added in like a splash of colour and adjusted the contrast a little bit. I grabbed a few images off the internet and did a spot of photo bashing. Photo bashing is basically where you just take the texture of a photograph and sort of overlay it on top of your base artwork so you can steal the texture and maybe some of the lighting. It doesn't really matter about what the photograph is, you just after the texture. It's a really quick way to add some detail in without having to paint in all these like cracks and things in rocks. So this is the part where it all comes together. I changed the whole mood of the painting just by altering the contrast and dropping the brightness. I went around with the lasso tool and just separated out the mid-ground, foreground and background elements with a bit of fog and some atmospheric perspective. A little bit of colour correction later and we've got ourselves a desktop wallpaper. Maybe not my best work but not bad for like less than 30 minutes. And before any of you leave a comment saying, oh my god, why does your Photoshop look like that? It's old, okay? I get it. I use old Photoshop, that's just how I like it. It's fine. So anyway, getting back to Blender, I started work on the rug. I made a quick texture in Photoshop then I just added it to a circle. I used a fairly thick hair particle system to simulate the wool of the rug. I rarely have any exact settings in mind when I use particle systems. For the posters on the wall, I used a technique I actually developed for one of my first ever Blender renders. I just import the images of plane, add a few cuts, and then I use proportional editing to move some sections away from where they'd be on the wall. For the older looking posters, I wanted them to be a bit used and crumpled, so I selected a few verts and I set the proportional editing to random mode. Then when you pull straight forward away from the poster you get this kind of nice wavy pattern like crumpled paper. The bed cover was just a subdivided plane with a solidify modifier applied to it. I pinned the top of the cover to the bed and then I ran a quick cloth simulation. 
Once that was done, I used that awesome new cloth brush just to add in some fine details. I suggest that you always give cloth materials a little bit of a transmission value. Woven fabrics always let a little bit of light pass through them. For the thread texture itself, I actually did that with bump mapping. I added two wave nodes and I used default coordinate mapping for one and object coordinates for the other. That meant that the wave texture lined up in different directions. When I mixed them both together using a mix RGB node set to multiply, you get like a nice crisscross effect like a, like a woven fabric. Then I used that into a bump node and it looked pretty good, nice and effective I thought for like a really simple technique. The pillows were just a quick cloth simulation and I used the new internal pressure setting to make sure they stayed nice and puffy and inflated once they actually hit the bed. The bin in the original drawn was frankly a bit crap. I think I must have run out of steam or something by the time I added the bin because it's just a big cylinder in the corner of the room. I decided it would be better if I used a wire mesh bin. So I created a cylinder, scaled it down and I scaled in the bottom face slightly. I kept just adding loop cuts to the middle of it until they were roughly square in shape. Then I marked all the loop cuts as sharp. I used the pork faces option in the face menu that cut it all out into diagonal lines. Since I'd already marked one of the horizontal lines as sharp, I just needed to select one of them and use the select similar function in the options and that selected all of the horizontal edges. And then I dissolved all those edges which left us with just the diagonal cuts. I applied a wireframe modifier to the mesh. Bob's your uncle, you've got yourself a wire mesh bin and it took like less than a minute. I originally planned to just steal one of the old chair assets that I made for one of my first ever blender scenes about three years ago or two and a half years ago. But when I found the old blend file and opened it up, I found that I'd actually deleted all the back faces off the object. Um, I think I was having trouble with performance at the time, so I figured if I just delete everything you can't see in the camera, it won't make a difference. Except of course for this scene, the camera is kind of coming from this view. So all I did is I just rotated the chair slightly so you couldn't see it and I mirrored it so I used the other side of the chair. It was a quick and easy method compared to building a chair from scratch so I was happy with it. So with all that modeling done it's time to render this out. I used a brand new feature in Blender 2.83 called Adaptive Sampling. This lets Blender decide how many samples to use for each section of the render based on how noisy that area is going to be. I haven't really played around with it too much yet but it saved me about 30 minutes I would say based on test renders I did earlier. So it's definitely something I'm going to be using in the future and I highly recommend you check that out. I rendered out the raw scene without any glass. I do this quite often because glass tends to darken interior scenes and it adds a lot of noise. So what I usually do is I'll just render it without the glass and then I do a separate pass of just the window and I composite the reflections and things in later on. So here's a reminder of how the original drawing looked and after a little bit of colour correction in Photoshop this is how my final render looked. I had to skimp on a few minor details just to get the video out on time so there's no mouse on that PC and the window doesn't have any curtains or blinds. If I had the time I would go back and add that stuff in but for now I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Especially considering this only took me a few hours, I think it looks pretty good. If you found this video helpful, hit all those nice buttons underneath the video. If you're a Patreon subscriber, you'll be getting access to the blend file of this scene shortly, probably in the next day. See you for the next one guys, and take care.